Jerry, are you, are you a believer in a win like this can springboard a team? Um, sure. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I well, Jay Woodcroft sure hopes a win like that will springboard this team. What a comeback in Manhattan. Edmonton Oilers erase a three-goal deficit and come up with a massive win over the New York Rangers. I don't know if it salvages a road trip. I don't know. Two losses and one win. I don't think that road trip is salvaged, but definitely lets them come home feeling a heck of a lot better about themselves than 0-3 oh, on that trip. Welcome to Got Your Back Short Shift Edition, folks. Brought to you by our good friends at Mid-City Construction Management, a locally owned family company specializing in civil construction projects for over 40 years. From roadways to excavation, underground utilities, paving and concrete, they have played a huge role in the infrastructure of Edmonton and surrounding areas since 1980. I've been out to a few of their job sites and man, huge scope of work, tons of equipment, tons of employees. It is a major player in the commercial construction industry here in Edmonton. All right, we're not going to waste any time because traveling on the road in New York with the team has been uh, our good friend Daniel Nugent Bowman, who joins us on the line. Uh, Daniel, I have to apologize. The picture I have of you is kind of soft and out of focus. It's not a great one. I got to get you to take a new picture of yourself and send to me, buddy. All right. For now, it'll we'll have to do, but we'll get on that. Uh, listen, uh, that third period was something else to watch on TV. Uh, what was it like to be in the building? I imagine it felt like... Uh, a lot of the air was coming out of the building after Evan Bouchard maybe got that second one, or was it more the tying goal? But the owners did a good job of silencing that crowd. Absolutely, and uh, they also did a good job of, of ripping apart my story. That was 600 words. Oh, yeah. Uh, just good, hey, good, just good put into go. perspective <laughs> what that does to you. Like, how much did yeah. you have written, <laughs> and what happens in the world of a writer when that takes place? Uh, I was 600 words in, and I might be able to salvage 20 years. <laughs> I don't know, 50 words. I don't know. <laughs> so it's Your uh, name basically and like byline? I gotta start all yeah. 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 Well, that's a lot of words, right? A lot of letters anyway. So, yeah. um, yeah. So, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the first goal Bouchard scored, you thought, okay, like they, 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 they just scored a goal. And, uh, after that, by the time they got the second one though, which was shortly after, uh, you could kind of sense something was, was, was afoot. And, um, I don't think I picked Dylan Holloway would not have been the guy that I would have picked. Uh, to get the winning goal, considering he hadn't scored yet. Um, but, I mean, Bouchard hadn't either. So that was a big story for this team in the third period. Two guys that got off the schneid and, uh, you know, it wasn't one of the regular, um, you know, regular contributors that, that, that got the job done. It was somebody else. And uh, you kind of saw that from or the, from the comments Lee and Dreisaitl had after the game, um, just saying how important that was for this team and how, you know, they know that, you know, guys like he and Connor and, and you know, Zach Hyman and, and, uh, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins, like it's their job to produce. That's what they're paid for. But um, you know, once in a while they need some some help, and and they got that tonight. So that uh, that was a huge huge win for for this team to go one and two rather than one three. As yeah. you mentioned, Ryan. No question. You mentioned Dry Saddle. We're going to go to the Weiss Johnson sound box. You were in the locker room with him. Here's part of what he had to say. It's a, it's a step in the right direction, um, but we got to follow it up. We we can't we can't continue to go win one lose one win one lose one. Five hundred isn't going to get you into the playoffs, so we gotta we gotta start winning some games uh, consistently and, and do it the right way. So um, I thought that third period that we had was was a great step. So let's talk about Evan Bouchard here first and foremost. In recent days, we've talked a lot, Daniel, about the quality of his play not being where it needs to be. Straight up. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we've been talking about blocked shots and how many of his opportunities he's putting into shin pads. We're talking about defensive lapses. Uh, Bouchard has not had a great start to the season, and this team really needs him to be firing at a good clip for them to take a step. Well, maybe tonight can be one of those nights that helps springboard him a little bit because for a guy like Evan Bouchard to be stuck on a bagel this deep into the season, that's got to feel good to spring that loose. Yeah, for sure. And to be fair, in the one sense, he's not uh, being given a lot of power play time, although he has more more lately. But in the other sense, uh, tonight, like he was on the third pair, right, to, to start this game with Philip Broberg. So to your point about um, Bush, you know, the Oilers needing more from Bouchard, you know, going into this season, you know, he was thought to be a second pair defenseman, which is where he was uh, 
you know, for basically the whole year, he started the year obviously playing mostly with Darnell Nurse on the top pair, and then the back half with uh, with Duncan Keith on the second pair. So uh, to have him now at the, on the third pair, at least uh, for tonight's game and this afternoon's game, um, you know, is, is a huge step back. But uh, the offense is such a big part of this game that if you can get that going a little bit, that maybe it offsets offsets a little bit of the defensive woes. And you're right, Ryan, for him to be on zero goals coming into this this game. Uh, it, you know, it's a huge issue for this team, especially, uh, you know, given the, the depth issues at Ford without Evander Kane and Kyler Yamamoto. So if they can get a little bit more from him, which they did tonight, uh, you know, that's, 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 that's a really important factor for this team because, uh, you know, quibble or, or if you want to split hairs between, you know, if it's, if it's him or Tyson Berry as the best offensive defenseman on the team, you know, he's either one or number two. So they need to get him going. And uh, that, uh, that was a big, big performance from Bruchard in the third period. Like the way he scored him too. I mean, he's one of the best defensemen the Oilers have at getting the puck through to the net. Struggled with it this year at times. Uh, but he was just blasting away, right? He's not letting it get in the way. He's not second-guessing himself. I don't see him double-clutching and being afraid. Uh, he got a couple blocked tonight again, same thing. But you know what? So what? Uh, I like the fact that he's just blasting away with confidence. That's the bread-and-butter portion of his game, and he needs to play that way. Dylan Holloway. So Jay Woodcroft makes an adjustment in the third period uh, builds a third line that had Holloway, McLeod, and Warren Fogle, one of the faster lines that the Oilers have the option of putting together. Uh, not only does he score a massive goal, Daniel, and a nice goal, and good, good on him, but also played a really major factor in that comeback, just in terms of being a really good energetic player and a strong net front presence on the first uh, of Bur- on the both of Bouchard's goals as well. Mm-hmm. And that's what they, I think they want, you know, from Holloway. And when he's at his most effective, is he's a really good four checker. And, he, and to your point about the speed with those three players, you know, he and McLeod and, and to lesser extent Fogel, like he, you know, he can really get in and, and create havoc. And um, that's why you'd like to see him, uh, especially at this point of his career, where he's a younger guy, um, you know, trying to make a name for himself. You'd like to see him yeah. play a little bit more, at least I would, uh, and, and try to kind of see what he's all about and. and you know, this was one of his best NHL games, if not his his absolute best. Um, and he was, you know, I mentioned we talked about Bouchard. Um, Dylan Holloway was just as, as key uh, to the Oilers coming back uh, to win this game. So, you know, I know there's been a lot of angst and, and talk about uh, Holloway. I wrote about him this week in terms of, you know, him potentially it being time for him to go, go down to the minors. And, um, you know, this could be an, uh, an effort where, you might want to rethink that if you're the Oilers, but I think in rethinking that, if they are, uh, it comes with uh, moving him up the lineup uh, because you know we can't have him, uh, you know, play single digits in terms of minutes a night and not get lots of opportunities. He got more of an opportunity in the third, and he made good on it. And I think that's uh, what you want to see more of. Uh, from him but he needs the chance to do it as well yeah so listen I'm not not a pat myself on the back guy I felt they needed to play Dreisaitl and McDavid together more often Uh, Woodcroft went to that I felt they needed to build a third line that had Dylan Holloway and and Ryan McLeod together uh, because of the speed that those two were able to play with so these two things end up working but the interesting thing you know he doesn't just go to those guys he starts them together uh you know, to start the game. It's the first time that he's done that all season. And they kind of yeah. went to some lengths to hide that from you guys on the road as well, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, they didn't really practice, uh, well, yesterday with, with lines or anything like that. Uh, as they brought up Roberg and just kind of worked on some drills. Uh, obviously, there was no morning skates uh, here today. And, and, yeah, it was the last question I was able to ask uh, Jay Woodcroft. I think the last question in total of the scrum. And he said, he said well, it's ironic because this was the night where those two guys didn't carry yeah. either, right? Uh, it was uh, it, it was uh, the two guys in, in Bouchard and and Holloway and you know some other guys down the lineup that uh, we've already talked about that that did the I don't want to say the heavy lifting but at least produced. Um, but, you know, it's very interesting, and I think you already played the clip, clip there, Ryan. But uh, I was surprised at how um, I don't want to say negative, but uh, uh, I'll use that word for lack of a better word. Uh, just, uh, you know, the way Dreisaitl was after the game, just saying that, you know, they can't keep doing this. And we've yeah. heard him say that so many times, uh, you know, but it, you, to the best of my memory, it's always come after losses. And for him to still say that uh, after a huge comeback win, I think really speaks to 
uh, kind of the need for this Oilers team to, to really get on track and, and, uh, uh, and, and kind of figure things out much earlier in games and, and to get more uh, contributions from, from other people around them, which they did get tonight, but it did, uh, they had to save it for, for very late in the game. Well, he's not happy, and he shouldn't be happy. Yeah. This team's underperforming. This team isn't as uh, – the record isn't where they wanted it to be. Uh, they're not playing the way they want to play. This has been a frustrating year, and Leon Dreisaitl is a guy that's going to be pretty blunt about that. Not only was he blunt about that, he also said that he talked to Dylan Holloway and said one goal doesn't make a career, so keep it going. Uh, Dylan yeah. Holloway apparently has been chatting quite a bit with Leon Dreisaitl in practice, going over some things. We'll go back to the Weiss Johnson soundbox. Here's Holloway talking about the influence that uh, skating, playing with guys like McDavid and Dreisaitl have had on him, and in particular, Dreisaitl in practice. Yeah, I was talking to Leo after practice, and he's been giving me great advice just about protecting the puck and kind of the mentality you need to like produce at this level and uh, just to establish yourself. So he's been really helpful, and obviously that guy scores a lot of goals, so anytime I can get some advice on how to score goals, he's a pretty good guy to help. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, and that from the Weiss Johnson Soundbox. We'll remind you that Weiss Johnson is your go-to place. If you're looking to put in a garage heater this year, I just did this week. Had a garage heater installed by the great crew at uh, Weiss Johnson. So now able to keep uh, the wife's car a little toasty warm. The weather's about to turn in the next five or six days here. We're going to get down into those mid-teens, uh, 20s kind of thing. So sorry to say that to you, Daniel, but you're coming home and it's not going to be fantastic. <laughs> but if you're thinking about a garage heater, give Weiss Johnson a call. 5803 Rip Roper Road is where you can visit them. Uh, 780-463-3096 is the number. Uh, let's go back there one more time real quick and listen to Dylan Holloway talking about his first NHL goal. And I think, Daniel, you're in the middle of this thing as well. It's pretty special. It was a cool moment. Definitely uh, definitely a memory and a goal that I'll uh, remember forever. So I'm just really excited about it. You picked a good time to do it, though, too. Yeah, I mean, it took me, it took me a little bit, but I'm happy to get the first one out of the way. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a, just a great all-around effort by my, my line. And it was just really cool that I went in. Had he not done this here tonight, I think he was probably heading the American Hockey League, maybe even as early as this upcoming week here. You think, I know you touched on it there, but pretty hard after that third line did what they did, not to put them together again for the next game against uh, who is it, Florida? Who is it? Yeah, Florida on Monday. Florida and Monday. And yeah. I, I think, yeah, I think you're right, Ryan. I mean, it doesn't send a very good message to the player if, if you know he has a game, maybe certainly the best period of his NHL career, short NHL career, and you send him down to the minors. So now, you know, they have to call up, they have to make a decision on on, um, on Tyler Benson. Uh, you know, everything I've been told is that he'll come up. Uh, they don't want to put subject him to waivers, and they'll bring him up um, and have him with the team. Now that they could just put Yamamoto yeah, retroactively on IR and, and punt the decision on, on Holloway or, or another forward or whatever. Uh, that seems like a more logical kind of path right now, especially after the way Dylan Holloway played. And um, yeah, I mean, a guy that had everyone looked at at training camp, just a tremendous, you know, preseason um, and, you know, kind of struggled. And, and, you know, he's had a very short leash on him um, when he's made mistakes. He's been dropped down in the lineup. But obviously he had that injury when he was hit by uh, Lubushkin there in, in Buffalo uh, midway through the, this part of the, the season so far. And, um, you know, just hasn't obviously produced. And uh, to get a huge goal like that in Madison Square Garden late in the game to, to, to tie a game and have the, your team ultimately win it, I mean, what more can you ask for, um, but, you know, out of your first NHL goal? So uh, I, I would think I agree with you, Ryan. I, I think, it, you know, it's a good opportunity for him to stay and, and see if he can build on it. And if he can't, then you send him down. But uh, I think he's – he's um, He's, he's extended to stay a little bit here, uh, given the performance that he had tonight. Other side of that, Philip Broberg gets recalled, uh, injected into the lineup. I think back to uh, the first game of the year. Excuse me. And Dylan Holloway, on one of his first shifts, stepped over the boards, turned a puck over, and ended up in the back of the net. It was basically the first thing he did. Yep. And it's the first note I have on the Oilers' regular season, Holloway turnover, if you remember that, Daniel. Yep. And so after the disappointing training camp and some injury stuff, Philip Broberg finally gets his chance, gets a recall, and on his first shift, a really bad blown coverage right in front of the net. Just, you know, he's almost like he's bent over just trying not to fall down while his man is burying the puck. That's a tough look and a tough way to start. But mm -hmm. you know what? Crap happens. And I thought, uh, yeah, he settled himself in, didn't play a lot. 
Um, but they're going to have to continue. If they're going to have him here, they're just going to have to continue to give him minutes. And mistakes like that, you know, nervous things like that are probably going to happen in a, in a first game of the year here for him. I'm giving him a yeah, pass I, is basically what I'm saying here, Daniel. Sure, I, I, I agree. Like, it couldn't have started any worse for, for Broberg. He was swatted away like a fly by Alexis Lafreniere, who's younger than, than yeah. he is. And, you know, uh, certainly – Obviously, a bit more established in the NHL, but still not, you know, not a, an absolute physical force or a, you know, a veteran, you know, playing a playing a trick on him or something like that. He, he was just out muscled by a younger player. Um, but to Jay Woodcroft's point, after the game, he stuck with him. He said mistakes are going to happen. Now, you know, uh, it's a little bit different with when you're running six defensemen and you, you can't. Sh- it's very hard to just bench one guy after one shift or or to really limit his his ice time. That that puts your team really short whereas you know with Holloway you can put him down the lineup and 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 you know either play fewer forwards or or don't play him as much or whatever it's a little easier uh but I like that that Woodcroft went back to him and tried to kind of make him feel good about his game rather than um as to your point Ryan earlier in the year when when Holloway makes the uh turnover to uh uh Elias Petterson and and you know, the, basically it starts going down the lineup from there. So yeah. um, I, I wish the, the leash had been a little bit longer on Holloway. I like that, you know, mm-hmm. again, sometimes it's necessity there, but I uh, like that, uh, you know, Phil Broberg wasn't completely forgot about by the coaching staff at that, after that, uh, at that gap. So, um, so yeah, I, I mean, it's clear that, that number is, uh, six defense spot like Ryan Murray's still up here uh, Broberg's here now I, I think they, they sent Marcus Neilina down to work on his puck skills and to give him some more ice time uh, Ken Holland said the other I guess it was yesterday to me so um, I don't know if that that spot is is going to be just a rotation between um, Nima Line and Broberg or if one of them's going to have to you know they obviously they prefer one of them to win the job but uh, if, if they feel confident enough that one of them can win the job at this point so I think uh, Broberg it was a I agree, kind of a a soft pass in terms of of his performance tonight. Um, yeah. But you like you like to see a little bit more. But you, I think there's there's room to grow there for that player. Yeah, I, I I guess I'm just saying I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go too far in criticizing him. We all saw the mistake. It was a tough mistake. Uh, we, we also saw you know Evan Bouchard make a few of those in previous games and Tyson Berry and mm-hmm. Nurse. Like it was just one of those ones. It's it's notable because he stepped off the bench and it was like the second or third thing that he did. The other, the one mm-hmm. thing I did notice, and I don't know if you picked up on this, Daniel, but his second shift, uh, I think it was like 10, 12 seconds long. Like he grabbed the puck, made a play out of the zone, and just changed. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I wonder if it jarred him a little bit, but he's going to get more ice time and more opportunity. If they have him up here, they got to keep playing him. Uh, looks like Holloway maybe will continue to get uh, some opportunity. So uh, some young guys in the lineup. And uh, at least Dylan Holloway tonight, some nice contributions. Big picture here, Daniel. This is not a successful road trip. Flat out, you don't want to go out on the road and come home with just one win and, and just a couple of points. And in terms of overall quality of play and what they've thrown out there, I know Jay Woodcroft is, is trying, to, uh, he's trying to pick out the positives, and I would be too if I were him. But overall quality of play over this three-game road trip, I would say the Oilers probably can't be too thrilled with themselves. No, and then I go again. I go back to Leon Draisaitl's comments, so just how uh, frustrated he was even after such a like a gutsy, great third period that that got them a win, four unanswered goals. You think most people would be would be thrilled by that, but I I, I agree with you, Ryan. I mean, he's he, it's been a frustrating year. Like, yeah, they're they're like four, you know, four and six in their last ten, uh, four and seven in their last eleven. Um, that's my, you know, this team went to the Stanley Cup semifinal last year. This is not a team of that kind of quality, at least there shouldn't be. Um, and, and so there's a lot, there's a lot that needs to be improved here. You know, I, I go back to my, my now dead 600 word column. Um, <laughs> you want to just read know, it to us anyway? Yeah. I mean, yeah so someone yeah, hears yeah, it. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> But 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 my point was going to be in the column that you know they just they don't they have four guys that they can rely rely on offensively. Their defense hasn't been great. Jack Campbell, um, I mean, he allows five goals tonight. I mean, three of them counted. He, he just he didn't look sharp. Um, and none of the the moves that that Woodcroft made tonight. It was kind of a uh, you know he even said after the game when I asked him about reigniting McDavid and Drysaddle, yeah. you know that that's not what they want to do. They want to have those two guys centering different lines to balance the offense. And this was. This was a, a move made by sheer necessity and, 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 and need. 
Uh, and it didn't work. I mean, those two guys did not produce uh, offensively. And, and putting Broberg with, with Bouchard didn't work, as we saw from the first goal um, through two periods. And then things changed, obviously, in the third, and they got the job done. But uh, there's a lot that, that uh, is not right with this team, and um, there's a lot that needs to change for yeah. this team to get really in the thick of this playoff hunt and, and uh, ultimately climb up the Pacific Division standings. I mean, I might dispute a little bit the idea that it didn't work putting those guys together. I thought that they carried the bulk of the play when they were out there. Uh, McDavid ended up with three shots, dry saddle three. I don't know how many of those were at even strength, but I, I thought that they, sure. I thought they looked dangerous. I know they had the majority of the chances when they were out there at evens. Sure. <clears throat> I've made the point recently, Daniel, that I think he needs to play them together a little bit more while they're struggling. Not necessarily start them together, but go to them quicker. And uh, sure. so I'm okay with the idea that he's given these guys a look. He's got a chance to, to you know, have this magic duo, and this team needs a little more magic these days. So. Uh, I thought they were okay tonight, but really it was a night where uh, a th- or an afternoon where uh, a makeshift third line that he threw together actually did end up working. So we yeah. got to give him we you know we crap on him when the stuff he tries doesn't work. He gets credit because uh, yeah. the line he put together made a difference. You know, to your point though, Ryan. I mean, again, you're, if you, if you think uh, McDavid and Drysdale should be playing together more, which I, I don't disagree with, um, it's it's because they're struggling, right? Like uh, they 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 kind of need that as as the way to jumpstart the offense. Yeah. Uh, and that, yeah, and so it's that's, that's not Plan A, and probably not even Plan B. Uh, but they've had to kind of go down the the uh, the list of a potential uh, fixes here. Uh, to get this team going, and and uh, I think I would I would agree with you that it, they they at least drove play, but they certainly didn't they didn't produce in terms of goals and assists. But but at least they were they were getting the, the ball rolling. But that's not what the Oilers want uh, out of those two yeah. guys because uh, they want them driving their own line. Agreed, Daniel. Thanks so much for your time, my friend. Safe travels home. Uh, I assume you'll be at practice uh, tomorrow, like the rest of us. I don't think so because uh, <laughs> taking the day, I, are you? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm actually going to be spending the night in Toronto. I got a plane in about three hours here. Oh, okay, and nice. going from yeah, going from Toronto uh, back tomorrow. So I highly doubt I'll be making it in time for practice tomorrow. All right, it's fair the, enough. Uh, it's a long trip, cross <laughs> cross continent trip. So, yeah, uh, yeah, but I don't think I'll be making it in time. All good, buddy. Safe travels. Yeah. We will see you on the game day, and thanks for joining us. You're very welcome, Ryan. Talk All to you right, soon. that is Daniel Nugent Bowman, uh, an excellent writer, works for The Athletic, covering the Edmonton Oilers, has been on the last couple of road trips, and we certainly thank Daniel for his time. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this uh, Saturday afternoon short shift. Oilers finishing up their road trip, couple of losses, and uh, come from behind win over the New York Rangers. Three and seven in their last 10. Now four and seven in their last 11. Wins like this, though, have a chance to galvanize a group. You don't want to overstate it, but wins like this have a chance to build a group that's confidence was waning. Build them up just a little bit. Add just that little element of swagger that they've been missing. Now the next time they're down a couple of goals, they're going to remember this, and it's going to feel like they have more of a chance then frankly, it's felt lately when they've been down in games. And so uh, an important win for the Oilers. We'll see what it means for them in the big picture. They're going to fly home this afternoon. Uh, they're going to have a practice on Sunday, I believe, and then getting set to host the Florida Panthers on Monday. We will be dropping podcasts all week long. So thank you for your downloads and your subscriptions. Please keep an eye on us. Uh, probably do a couple podcasts this week with Struds, Terry Ryan, Pierre Lebrun, and I will do our Got Your Back NHL pod. If you haven't had a chance to check that one out, we drop that normally on Wednesdays, and we've had some great guests. We had Trevor Zeger- uh, yeah, Trevor Zegris. Uh, pretty recently here, you know, we've had Jay Woodcroft and Paul Maurice. Uh, pretty good list. Matthew Kachuk even joined us. So if you haven't had a chance, check out Got Your Back NHL Edition. Generally drops on Wednesdays. Have yourselves a fantastic Saturday evening and a finish to your weekend on Sunday. Enjoy the soccer game, folks. Enjoy NFL Sunday if that's your thing. And uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Cheers. <laughs>